perception of cellular stress is perhaps the first step in the entire process of stress mitigation. Now prokaryotes, they mainly lie in a hydrated environment. So the most common kind of stress that they are exposed to is osmotic stress. So whenever there is change in the water content of the media they are living in, their cell shape, volume and physiological functions in response to it change. So this perception of stress will differ whether the stress is hypoosmotic or hyperosmotic. So we need to understand the osmotic content concept. To begin with, the water potential of pure water is zero. So just like winds or the electric current flows, water will always flow from a higher water potential to lower water potential state. So when we add solutes to the water, the water potential drops down. So it will become negative. So more osmotic content, more solute content that will create a hyperosmotic situation. So when a cell is lying, the cytoplasm, it has certain solutes dissolved in it. So the water potential there is negative. Similar with the medium. It also does not have pure water. It will also have some solutes and ions into it. So there also the water potential will be negative. So there will be a balance equilibrium kind of state where water will keep flowing in accordance to the change in solute accumulation. So now when the conditions are such that the environment has lots of solutes into it, then the water potential there will drop much below than the pre-existing condition. So it will become more negative. So under those conditions, water will flow from inside of the cell to the outside of the cell that is from a minus water potential that is higher as compared to minus water potential that is outside the cell. So the condition is such that the cells tend to become flaccid. Reverse happens in hypoosmotic condition. So when the solute concentration outside in the environment that decreases as compared to the pre-existing situation. So the water potential rises. So it tends to become closer to zero while that of the inside of the cell is still negative. So in those circumstances, water will flow from outside of the cell that is at higher water potential to inside of the cell that is at a lower water potential. So there are chances that the cell might burst. So these two differences have to be perceived correctly and for that perception there are membrane bound histidine kinases present inside cell. The most common example is that of a two component system. Other than that there are membrane bound chemoreceptors which obviously respond to changes in chemical environment and in addition there may also be some carrier proteins involved in this function. The two component system as the name suggests has a sensor kinase. Kinase means a protein that is capable of phosphorylating something. So this is a membrane bound protein with a hydrophobic domain lying in the membrane and the hydrophilic N terminal and C terminal portions lying on the above and underside of the cellular membrane. So it has an input domain which actually receives the signal and it has a transmitter domain lying towards the cytoplasmic side which can transmit the signal to the component 2 which is a soluble response regulator again capable of being phosphorylated and it is found in the cytoplasm. So these are generally histidine sensor kinases which are present in prokaryotic system. They have as discussed membrane bound portions a hydrophilic loop and a hydrophilic C terminal region. Now whenever there is a change in environmental condition, stimulus is generated that can be perceived either through the hydrophilic loop connecting the two membrane domains or by the hydrophobic domains themselves or under some circumstances by the cytoplasmic hydrophilic C terminal chains. As soon as the stimulus is perceived, there is dimerization and then 
transphosphorylation in which the histidine residues present in the C-terminal transmitter domain get phosphorylated. Followed by this, the transmitter domain can transmit that signal through phosphorylation of aspartate residue of the response regulator. Now this response regulator has two options. Either it may directly go and perform some functions in relevance to the gene or there may be certain target molecules which form parts of this phosphorylation cascade and those downstream molecules will further effect differential expression of genes in response to the stress. Alternatively, sometime even carrier proteins can act in the process of sensing the signal. So obviously under these circumstances, this signal is in the form of some ions or some metabolites or some solutes. So these are perceived by the carrier proteins captured and transmitted inside the cell. So if they are performing this function in addition to their normal function, they are termed as sensory transport proteins or if they move inside and they regulate transcription, then they are also called trigger enzymes. An example of such system is the carrier proteins involved for transport of maltose or dicarboxylates in E. coli. Now whenever there is a change in osmotic potential, then the water flux across the cell envelopes will change. Now aquaporins as a mode of transport of water, they have very rarely been found in microbes. They are not generally reported. So they are not able to actively handle water transport inside and outside of the cell. So for that, they have to depend on different alternative mechanisms. So whenever this flux changes, the water and macromolecule that is DNA, RNA or proteins, their interactions will change and relatively the interactions between these macromolecules that is DNA, RNA or proteins and metabolites, ions, they will also change. Now in general, these macromolecules remain surrounded by water molecules. So they are present inside kind of a cushion, kind of a cage. So when the hydration changes, that means these interactions are broken. So the macromolecules, they tend to come close and lie around each other. So this process is called molecular crowding. Now this perception of change in osmotic potential, this needs to be identified very specifically in terms of the origin of the stimulus. Because the stimulus may be coming from the periplasmic side because that is also a hydrated region. It may be coming from the cytoplasmic side or it may be coming from the outside environment. So all these possibilities are there. So the turgor that the cell feels, it may be external because of changes in the medium in which the cell is surviving or it may be internal that is coming because of the molecular crowding. And there are additional parameters into it such as the changes in the bilayer curvature or the pressure that the membrane is experiencing or even the components that are present in the membrane, they may be distributed differently in response to changes such as phospholipids, etc. Some well-known systems for perception of osmotic stress in bacteria include the KDPD, KDPE system that is present in response to osmotic changes and NZ OMPR systems both present in E. coli and MTRA, MTRB that is present in Corynebacterium glutamicum. This is meant for biosynthesis transport system and this too is involved in osmoregulation. So as an example, when there is change in the osmotic potential, there is a histidine kinase sensor present on the membrane termed as KDPD. That KDPD gets phosphorylated it transmits this signal further to the response regulator KDPE. Now this KDPE can influence transcription from a gene system, gene operon called KDPFABCDE. This is actually divided into two parts. Here it has been named together for a section of a gene which is being regulated in response to this. So when there is change in transcription from here, the RNA content increases 
it moves beyond goes for translation and proteins are formed now this entire gene operon is responsible for synthesis of several proteins that include the components of the tcs that is two component system so kdp d will be formed more of kdp e will be formed so that more signal can be perceived and the gene regulation can be upregulated and second it also codes for a kdp atpase that is in response to potassium ion limitation so that an active uptake system is formed which can take more and more potassium ions inside of the cell another osmosensitive tcs of e coli is nz omp system now omp are outer membrane proteins which are constitutively expressed at lower concentrations in the bacterial cells so when there is high osmolarity omp c is formed more when there is low osmolarity omp f is formed more in either case it is the nz which is the histidine kinase present on the membrane this senses this takes up the signal and gets autophosphorylated in response then it phosphorylates the ompr which is the response regulator and this ompr in the phosphorylated state it can directly affect gene regulation at ompf and ompc both now even at low concentrations of omp r phosphorylated form it can bind to ompf activator sequences while a relatively very high amount of ompr in the phosphorylated form that is required for binding to activator sequences of omp c so under conditions of uh, low osmolarity the phosphorylation of nz is very less so that there is very low formation of ompr in the phosphorylated form so it this low concentration it can only bind to omp f so omp f gets expressed more as compared to omp c now omp f has a larger pore diameter as compared to omp c so now correlate that if the osmotic potential is low that is hypoosmotic condition is there the cell needs to pull more of the solutes inside the cell so that water does not move out so under those circumstances when there is large pore size then more and more solutes are brought inside so that the water potential becomes more negative and water is retained in the cell now reverse happens under conditions of high osmolarity when more water is supposed to be moving out under those circumstances since the content of phosphoompar has increased because of more signaling through nz omp c will bind uh, more and more of phosphorylated omp r so when omp c is formed more then low pore size is available so low solutes will be taken inside the cell in response to high osmolarity now additionally this is not the only mechanism of controlling the amount of omp c and omp f there is a mrna which is called nt sense mrna mic f which is formed against omp f so when there is high osmolarity in addition to this particular mechanism mic f is also formed which reduces the amount of omp f protein so these are some of the ways in which osmotic potential can be sensed and a response can be generated so that the osmotic stress can be balanced